Mars tasks include a wide variety of supportive information intended to orient the teacher to a particular task. We will review this information today in this brief video. Each of these sets of information may provide critical insight to teachers as they prepare for instruction and as they reflect on their instruction after the task. Immediately following the task title, conference tables in this case, and the appropriate grade level for this task, the Common Core content and practice standards are presented. Each MARSC task requires particular content standards and practice standards to successfully complete. These standards are presented for each task, and in the downloadable materials for each task, these standards are presented as well. Before engaging in the task with students, a teacher will find it very helpful to review these standards. The Common Core State Math Content Standards needed to complete the Conference Tables task are building a function that models a relationship between two quantities and building new functions from existing functions. The Common Core State Standards for Mathematical Practice that are required by this task are Standard 1 make sense of problems and persevere in solving them, and standard seven, look for and make use of structure. The student sheets for the conference tables task are on the third and fourth pages of the downloadable materials, which are labeled pages 41 and 42 on the bottom of the PDF. Spend a few minutes looking at what you will be asking students to do in the task and consider the following. How does this task align with the Common Core Math Content Standards? How can my instructional plan reflect the Common Core Math Content Standards and the Standards for Mathematical Practice for this task? What might it look like and sound like for my students to engage in this task? And how do I plan for that? On the following page, labeled page 43 on the bottom of the downloadable PDF, you will find the scoring rubric. The scoring rubric highlights the core elements of performance within this task and the correct answers with corresponding points for each question on the student task. As you review the rubric, ask yourself, how might knowing the core elements of performance inform your instructional plan? Examples of student work can be found on the pages labeled 44 through 50 at the bottom of the downloadable PDF. For our conference tables task, we find seven pieces of student work examples. Many of the samples are preceded by a brief discussion of the example that follows, offering observations about the student's approach and conjectures about the student's understanding. After looking through the set of student work samples, consider the following. What sorts of questions might I ask of student A? How about student B? How might I plan for students to talk with one another about their solutions? What about their struggles? What do I need to listen for in student conversation as they wrestle with this task? What do I need to look for in student work? The statistical analysis section gives teachers an idea how students in a nationally normed sample performed on this task. For our conference tables task, most students, 87%, could count the number of tables in the diagram. This section also includes the frequency of each possible score on the task and the percentage of total students who achieved less than or equal to each score, as well as students who achieved greater than or equal to each score. Following the stats analysis, we find a list of common understandings and misunderstandings based on students' scores. Looking this section after a task may offer some guidance about how to help students given their score on this task. Today, consider how might knowing the more common understandings shape instruction? In what ways might these common misunderstandings be useful as you plan? Next, 
teacher observations were collected for each particular assessment task, and from those observations, the authors culled a set of knowledge and skills that most students seemed to know and were able to do as they engaged in the assessment task. We also find areas of difficulty with most students throughout their work with the assessment task. How might knowing what's typical for students be helpful in instructional planning? Page labeled 53 at the bottom of the downloadable PDF provide a set of reflective questions that challenge teachers to deeply consider how their students performed on the task and offers notes for instructional implications. As you review this section, consider to yourself, how might these reflective questions be useful to you? How about to you and a group of colleagues? In what ways might the implications for instruction be useful? Please answer the brief reflection questions below and then proceed to review our instructional guide materials. Good luck and have fun!